Hi, I'm your host Sasha and welcome once again to Pearl English. We're going to learn about the present and past perfect tenses in our grammar section today, dear boys and girls. Let's talk about the present perfect. It is the tense that contains has or have and the past participle. It describes a past happening which is related in some way to the present time. In other words, we look back to the past from the present. Since both the present perfect and the past perfect are formed with past participles, let me tell you briefly what that is. A past participle is a word that has the exact same form as a simple past tense. It ends in ED for regular verbs. As for irregular verbs, the past participle and the past tense may differ. The past participle also has a passive meaning. Here, take a look at this table. Okay, let's look at some sentences written in the present perfect tense. Do remember that the present perfect has an active voice. Someone has opened the window. This sentence tells us about an action that has happened recently and the result can still be seen in the present. That is, the window is still open. You will also notice that no adverb of time is used. I have already watered the plants in the garden. This sentence uses the present perfect to tell us about something that was done in the recent past. We can use words like already, still, and yet to show that it was done not too long ago. Again, no advert of time is used. I have just seen the film The Black Hole and I do not like it. When talking about an event or action that happened very recently, we add the word just between have and the past participle and avoid using a time expression to say exactly when it happened. Salamia has never been to Brazil. This sentence uses the present perfect tense to talk about an action or event in the whole of someone's life up to the present time. In this sentence, the word never confirms that Salamia has not had the experience of visiting Brazil up to this point in her life. A time reference is not needed. Let's move on to the past perfect tense. It is similar to the present perfect except that it uses had instead of has and have. We use the past perfect tense to show that one thing, an action or a state in the past happened before another thing. The women had baked all the cakes before the guests arrived. The sentence clearly shows one action being completed in the past before another action happened. The baking had been completed, then the guests arrived. The past perfect tense can also be used in indirect speech to express the idea in direct speech that was in the present perfect. Let's watch some of our friends using direct and indirect speech to see how the present perfect tense changes to the past perfect form. I have taken my medicine. He said that he had taken his medicine. My father had just gone out to meet his friends. She said that her father had just gone out to meet his friends. I have travelled all over the world. He said that he had travelled all over the world. My grandmother has won the marathon. 
Noor told me that her grandmother had won the marathon. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> Homonyms are words that are spelled and pronounced in the same way but have a different meaning. Hair, hair, night, night, bark, bark, sun, sun. Fairy, fairy. Okay, we're back with another poem, Leisure by William Henry Davis. A poem is a piece of creative writing that communicates emotions and feelings to its readers. Some poems have their own unique rhythm and rhyme. Poems help us paint vibrant pictures in our mind with the help of our senses. Poems are usually arranged in a series of lines that can be separated into verses or stanzas. Let's listen to a friend reading Leisure. What is this life if, full of care, we have no time to stand and stare? No time to stand beneath the bows and stare as long as sheep or cows. No time to see when woods we pass, where squirrels hide their nuts in grass. No time to see in broad daylight, streams full of stars, like stars at night. No time to turn at beauty's glance, and watch her feet, how they can dance. No time to wait, till her mouth can enrich that smile her eyes began. A poor life this if, full of care, we have no time to stand and stay. Oh wow, I love this poem. Okay, let's see what the themes of this poem are. Number one, leisure is an important part of life. Number two, there is so much beauty in nature. Number three, we need to find a time in our busy schedule to appreciate and enjoy the beauty of nature. The first theme that comes through from this poem is the importance of leisure. So what is leisure? Leisure is actually the time when you are absolutely free and away from any kind of work. This is that time when you have no chores to do, no homework to do, and no studying to do. So instead of relaxing in front of the TV, playing computer games, or sleeping when you are free, why don't you use your leisure time to go outside and surround yourself with nature as it can heal your stress and motivate your happiness? The second theme found in the poem has to do with the beauty of the natural world around us. Have you ever been alone with nature? Ever had a quiet moment with it? Well, if you have, then this poem will make a lot more sense to you. When you are free, go outside and smell the flowers. Touch the ground. Take your shoes off and walk on the grass. Gently stroke the leaves on plants and soak your hands and feet in the flowing water of a stream. Also, do not forget to watch the little animals that scurry by and the insects that flutter around. While you stop and stare at nature, she will also be looking back at you and wishing you only good things in life. Okay, theme number three is like a reminder to all of us that we need to slow down a little. Our world has become too fast-paced and too competitive. People rush from one place to another, from one activity to another. Everyone seems to have no time as they are busy chasing success. With success comes money 
and money is power. <sighs> it's sad, as many of us have become so disconnected from nature. The digital world that we live in has also contributed to us spending more time on gadgets and having no time for anything else. This need to be online 24-7 has taken away much of the quality time that we should be spending with our own selves, the members of our family and with Mother Nature. There are many things that Mother Nature wants to whisper to you, so take some time off to listen. Well, those were some of the themes from the poem, Leisure by W.H. Davis. I hope that it has helped you understand the poem a little better. So see you soon, take care, and keep on reading. Bye!